Okay, folks, welcome to Best Stock Charts for the coming week. Before we get to those charts, let's go over the S&P 500 last week's action. This is a weekly chart, up 1.68%, made a new weekly high, running into resistance at 195. Do I believe that this market will probably rally further in the short term? I believe so. Longer term, I believe that this is a counter trend rally in an overall bear market. So short term, bullish. Longer term, I remain bearish. So if you folks that are viewing this video after clicking the link in one of my emails, you'll see that current market sentiment is bearish. That is for the longer term. Short term for the next week or so, bullish. So how did we do last week? What was our performance? We booked profits in Borg Warner. I discussed BWA on best stock charts posted January the 24th. It's free for all to see. Just go to my blog at thecontrariantrader.com. And I mentioned during that video, I suggested that shorts begin covering. I didn't want to buy it up here because we knew there were sellers and I predicted that we would get a continuation pullback. We got it. Now, when you take a look at the higher low that's getting put in, Borg Warner is actually looking interesting. But I can tell you right now, from a weekly perspective, we're at resistance. We booked profits here on the 27th. The market was falling apart. Uh, Borg Warner was behaving well, except it started to sell off the highs of the day. So that was a signal, you know what, we better get out. And the following day, a bearish reversal day. The fact that we closed higher on Friday negated this bearish reversal day, and I think that we should move higher. I also mentioned at that point in time, beware of the rounding top on Borg Warner. This is not a good sign. Although we had RSI well below 20, I still said avoid it. We aren't at historical support levels, which we eventually hit. We had a rounding top below 20 on stochastics. This needs to get resolved, or this needed to get resolved, and it did. So, nice profit on Borg Warner. What else did we trade last week? FireEye. We bought it here. Bullish reversal day. We sold it up here at resistance. FireEye remains on our watch list as a potential long. Members, I will be discussing FireEye further this coming week uh, during the week ahead commentary, which will be going out to members on Sunday. You would need to be a member. The week ahead commentary is where I discuss the health of the overall markets, as well as our current positions, trades that we're looking to put on, and perhaps a tutorial thrown in for good measure. So FEYE, interesting members, more to come later. TKAI, we book profits on this one right here on this topping action. The stock rallied. I always warn about hollow candlesticks, at resistance especially, and the stock pulled back. Now, the stock could have broken down, made new lows, and I would have just ignored it. However, what I like here is the fact that we flashed a reversal day on Friday. This comes after we broke down below support on Thursday. This is a bear trap. I've been talking a lot about breakout point failures, also known as bull traps, which is a sign of a top in a stock or a sign that the stock, which had a short-term rally, is about to reverse and go close lower because it can't hold a breakout. In this case, TKAI reversed, recaptured support after losing it. Normally, when this occurs, you see a stock just get decimated. In this case, it reversed to close higher. TKAI, I believe, moves higher in the coming trading days. And this is a watch stock for us. CFR. This is one that we traded, booked profits a couple of weeks ago, but was able to break out above this resistance level, which was my primary concern. In a weak market, would, would it be able to break out? And it did so. Now what I think is going to happen is that you're going to get a retest of $46 per share. We'll be looking to see how the stock behaves on that pullback. Does the support level hold? Is down volume high? Does it reverse off the lows of the day and close higher on the day, which would be a bullish key reversal? We'll watch the behavior of the stock. The market sends you signals and tells you when it's right to buy or sell. So it's not time to buy just yet. Could it move higher? Sure. 
But ideally, from a risk to reward perspective, it pulls back to 46. We will eyeball it then. Now, let's go over a couple of stocks that I discussed on best stock charts, and I never traded it. However, my members did because they followed up. They used one of my services, which is called Second Opinion, where they asked my opinion about how the trade would possibly unfold, the trade that they were considering. And I gave them my thoughts, and they did quite well. MTG Daily Chart. Again, I discussed this on Best Stock Charts the week of January the 24th. Everybody hated it. We loved it. And the stock has rallied from a low of 5.63 to a high on Friday of 6.62. So almost a dollar per share on a percentage basis. That's pretty huge. So a great trade. Fellow member Ronaldo and Alex took advantage of this trade. Congratulations, guys. Continue to use second opinion. TCBI. Fellow member Alex, who I just referenced on MTG, he traded this one as long as fellow member Asif using second opinion. I discussed this on Best Stock Charts the week of January the 24th. You can go back, still posted there. The only warning I gave them was that you're seeing some topping action. There were a large number of shorts which could propel the stock higher. I predicted on best stock charts that we would get a continuation pullback. We got it. And the reason why we gave the all clear for the trade is that I went to the 30-minute chart and we saw, let's update this chart, a breakout on a 30-minute chart above this upper band of resistance. Now, I didn't point this out or else I would have bought the shares. Our members who were looking to trade this stock learned how I taught them to identify early warning breakouts on stocks. In this case, they used a 30-minute chart. It broke out. They ran it past me. They observed this breakout. Green light. It was off to the races, and sure enough, it took off. So congratulations, guys, and really, really good observation. So all of these stocks, I don't necessarily trade myself. I've already spoken about the ones that I did, and several I haven't sold yet. But right now on a daily chart, would I add more to TCBI? No. Here's your resistance level. You need to be careful. These topping tails are telling you there are sellers above. When would I change my mind? On a close above 36.28. It must close above it. Do I think it can? Absolutely. Great double bottom setup on your stochastics. Good volume last week to the upside. Watch your volume to the downside, though. It wasn't net selling because you had a stock rally off the lows of the day. Just watch your volume. You don't want to see these down volume bars grow. You want to see them decline. Ultimate oscillator looking good, high or low. I think this stock has potential to the upside. I won't chase it from here, so it is not necessarily a watch stock. SRPT. This is a stock I also went over on Best Stock Charts January the 24th, but we watched it. We had the discipline because I warned we weren't at support yet. We were in the middle. It broke down. It found support last week, daily chart now, RSI 14.67. The stochastics flattening out. Stokes are poised to move higher. Good reversal day on Friday, but you have resistance above. That's my only concern. Volume was light as well. So I don't think it's off to the races yet. Members, what we'll do is we'll go in, drill down to a intraday chart, identify a possible early warning breakout. That's not showing up yet on the daily chart. Perhaps we'll use a hourly chart, a 30-minute chart, to identify whether or not it's time to open a position. American Express, another stock I referenced on Best Stock Charts January the 24th. It was... Trading down below support, I predicted it would go lower. At that point in time, it was at 55.06. I mentioned that there would be additional pain, and sure enough, we got it. On morning update on Friday, we had it as a watch. At that point in time, from Thursday's close, it was trading down below this key support level. I mentioned to members that in all probability, they would rally the stock and close it above this support level, which it did, daily chart. So AXP daily chart, RSI at 17.34, very attractive. Stochastics forming a double bottom setup. Historically, AXP does form a double bottom setup. You saw it here, here, 
here, here. So the stock has a tendency to double bottom out. Good stuff. Very, very bullish. So on Friday, you had price action. It was an inside day. No new high, no new lows. Volume was very good. Double top and a lower high on ADX red. So I think that AXP shares will move higher. We'll be looking to open up position early next week. Gold, also mentioned on January 24th, best stock charts. I still like it. Daily chart, which I mentioned was very, very noisy at that point in time, is still noisy. However, you had a bullish key reversal on Friday. Can't be ignored. It did close off the week's highs. However, with the dollar showing some weakness, yes, it closed higher on Friday, but still closed off the highs of the day. I think gold moves higher. Monthly chart, we are watching for a breakout. Here's the dollar in green. We are looking for a breakout above this resistance level. We're very close to it. We will not buy into resistance. You already have a breakout on RSI, as noted here. The week of January the 4th, RSI broke out. Note, the share price didn't break out on the GLD. RSI did. This is what I teach members to watch out for and how to trade off of. So while I wouldn't buy these shares now, we'll be setting up a strategy to begin building a position in the GLD. We've already been long of the gold miners, which have been ripping through the roof for all of 2016. So what were weak sectors of the economy in 2015 are poised to be leaders in 2016 because gold has closed higher by 5.41% in the month of January versus the S&P 500, which is down nearly 5%. So that's a 10% spread between performance between the S&P 500 and the GLD. I think that gap is going to widen even further in 2016. UNH breaking out above a resistance level. We'll be looking to buy UNH at some point in time next week on a pullback members as with all our trades i will be sending out an alert higher lows on ultimate oscillator breakout on stoke rsi stochastics breaking out above resistance all good stuff we just need to time our buy right we do have resistance above so yes a bullish key reversal on friday very very good day that doesn't necessarily mean that you go loading up on shares because you have a lot of people that bought up here they're going to want their money back that's overhead supply so i'll be talking more about overhead supply when i discuss serve pro and mcdonald's so unh bullish attu attuity rsi at 12.27 very attractive Hammered like a baby seal. We love it. Everybody else hates it. Good stuff. These volume bars are very concerning. This is institutional distribution. You can't fight these guys. Let them dump. We are leaning into the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. Attractive possible double bottom setup on your stochastics. We need to look at the weekly chart. You'll note that we bounced off of support last seen back in july of 13 and we closed above support last seen back in august of 14. so historical charts once again come into play as always we we always want to identify where there might be buyers and a historical support levels are where the buyers are at so acuity closed at support we know we have resistance at six dollars and fifty cents we'll be talking more about acuity members as we drill down to the intraday charts to identify a possible breakout on an intraday basis. We're not there yet. I'm not ready to buy just yet. Perhaps on a pullback. We'll discuss it further though. CIT, very attractive. Daily chart, RSI 15.31. Very, very oversold. RSI is now beginning to move higher. We are at resistance on a daily basis. Not time to buy just yet. Volume was excellent on Friday. Institutional accumulation. Stochastics are breaking out. Double bottom setup. Exactly what you want to see. So CIT is on our watch list. Historical support. We bounced right off of it. Just like we did back in August of 11. And October of 11. We're back down there once again. CIT 
looking very attractive. Just watch out for this 50-period moving average, which is going to cross below the 200-period moving average. No way to avoid this. It's going to happen. Whether or not it will put pressure on the share price, not quite sure yet. The odds are yes. The question is how much of this divergence is already priced into the share price. So I don't. I wouldn't imagine that would be there would be all that much pressure put on the share price simply because the 50-day is now going to cross below the 200-day moving average. I think that's factored in here for the most part. EEM, emerging markets. Uh, last month, meaning January, the trading month is over, we were trading down below support at 29.54. We managed to rally back and recapture a weekly chart. So we have a beautiful setup here. Last week, we had a bullish key reversal. Last week, we followed through with a breakout. So depending upon the U.S. dollar and the direction that it takes, we'll be looking to buy the EEM. Stronger U.S. dollar means weak EEM. Weak U.S. dollar means strong EEM. They trade inversely of each other. They cannot be ignored. So EEM is looking good. McDonald's, I mentioned this last best stock charts on January the 24th. At that point in time, it was trading below resistance. Earnings were coming out. Earnings were stellar, and the stock broke out. This is a stock that has zero overhead supply. Meaning, there are no sellers waiting, waiting to get made whole. So what does that mean? It means that any rally, there's no resistance above. Nobody's looking to sell. So a lot of upside potential for MCD. Volume, excellent. So we'll be looking to buy MCD in the coming week or weeks. But it's going to need to see a pullback daily chart. We are nearing the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. It's very overbought, trading on top of the two standard deviation. We're going to get a pullback soon. And on that pullback, we'll be looking to buy McDonald's shares as a longer-term investment. Because, going back to the weekly chart, we know that there's no overhead supply, the stock is at all-time highs, and the fundamentals are good, as are the technicals. This is a story that we like. A stock in a weak market environment, which is outperforming the S&P 500. Remember that the S&P 500 was down by nearly 5% in January, while McDonald's was up 4 and 3 quarters percent. It can't be ignored. And note the strong, this is a monthly chart, note the solid base that McDonald's broke out of. Very, very attractive. But we're going to need to get a pullback before we get involved. Okay, next chart up. Service Master. I mentioned this one on Best Stock Charts January the 24th as a long trade. We broke out of a flag formation last week. The market was sending us signals. Double bottom setup on RSI. Double bottom setup on the Stochastics. Volume, excellent. So I think Service Master shares longer term are going higher. And this is another classic case of a stock like McDonald's that has no overhead supply. No sellers out there looking to get made whole so this stock can run hard and fast after putting in a very long and solid base. But on a daily basis, I think that Service Master is going to get a pullback. We are trading above the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. We're going to get a pullback. On that pullback, we'll be looking to open up a position longer term on Service Master. These charts, McDonald's and Service Master, are what investments are made of longer term investments or if you want to call them position trades not day trades not swing trades but long term investments good fundamentals the technicals are excellent long bases and they're breaking out of those long bases which sets them up for long rallies with no overhead supply netflix weekly chart broke down below key support last week we, we booked profits way too early on our short position. I had anticipated that Netflix would rally with the overall market. It didn't. Netflix has become a laggard. It is now lagging the S&P 500. And I think our first price target is going to be 85.50 on Netflix. Netflix is definitely a short. And if you want to take a look at the daily chart, we had a bullish reversal on the 28th. We couldn't follow through on the 29th. And we flashed a huge topping tail or a wick shadow, whatever you want to call it, 
All that it implies when you read this is that you have sellers above that were dumping shares. This is a critical support level. This support level, which it broke down below on Friday, was a strong double bottom setup, which was the launching pad for the rally up to 133.27. I think Netflix goes lower. SQQQ, the pro shares, ultra short, triple Qs. All right, so throughout 2015, the triple Qs kept the market up while you had the vast majority of stocks breaking down in 2015. The triple Qs or the FANG stocks were able to put a brighter face on the overall market, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ by being able to rally and compensate for the weakness of other stocks that were not in that index. That seems to have all changed because you've had the triple Qs underperform the overall market in January. The S&P 500 was down nearly 5%. The triple Qs were down over 6%. So there's a divergence. What were leaders are now beginning to break down and lag, Netflix being one of the first and foremost. Now, Facebook, yes, rallying. How long will it last? Not quite sure. It could last throughout the year, but the entire Triple Q complex, I don't think is going to rally through the remainder of 2016. So the SQQQ puts you short of the Triple Qs. So Thursday, the market sent a signal that we had sellers above at 25. You had to get out if you were long. Friday, a breakdown, close down below the 200-period moving average. I think that these shares go lower, and there will be opportunity in the future to buy the shares. In the short term, I believe that the market overall, because it's extremely oversold, will continue to rally. You're going to get a counter-trend rally in a bear market. So eventually, the buying will be done, that counter-trend rally will be over, and the path of least resistance will resume to the downside. And that's when we'll be looking to build a position in the SQQQ. Not yet. Members, stay tuned for the week ahead commentary. It's where we review the health of the overall market and our positions and trades that we're looking to put on early next week. Stay tuned. That will be coming out to you on Sunday. Everybody have a profitable trading week. Be well.